We're back with John Webster, director of Hogan Entrepreneurial Program at Chaminade University. John, prior to being director of the Hogan Entrepreneurial Program at Chaminade, you did work for about 25 years at IBM. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Right, Carrie. Well, most of my, well, I started like many people do at IBM. I was a, a salesman in the early days when the computers took up many rooms, many uh, the size of this one, the kind we now put on our laptop. But most of my career in IBM was in what I we call government affairs work and public policy work. And uh, I, I took a leave many years ago and got a Ph.D. in business and public policy and was able to carve out a very interesting career in IBM using that kind of background. I was a lobbyist. I was um, ran public affairs and government affairs operations in Washington, in uh, Brussels, in Hong Kong. And those were the days when the IBM company was a leader in in social entrepreneurship and and, and public uh, uh, affairs activities, if you will. So it was really fortunate for me to be part of a company in the what was really the heyday of major corporate activity. I left there in 1990, and corporations are uh, not often uh, following the footsteps that, that IBM once did, but it was a very interesting time. How did you end up in Hawaii? Living in uh, Singapore for eight years, running the MBA program that I mentioned. But I, before I went to Singapore, I had an opportunity to be uh, head of government affairs for KPMG in Washington. And uh, But I was committed to marrying uh, a woman you met earlier, Don, who was Malaysian. And Don's idea of a compromise between Malaysia and Washington, D.C. was Singapore, which is about 100 miles from, Malay- from Kuala Lumpur. So I gave up the best job I ever had in my life as head of government affairs for KPMG, but happily, of course, not only to marry Don, but to... That's a good answer. But to be, that's right, a safe answer. To, she'll be listening. <laughs> but but to uh, really, though, to uh, also teach at that university in Singapore. It's one of two large universities in Singapore, so it was a very nice opportunity. But then how'd you end up from Singapore to here? Uh, that's, uh, okay, sorry, getting to that. Well, after eight years in Singapore... And uh, 90 degree humidity most of the time, we really want to do. Now, now I had more leverage to genuinely compromise. So, uh, getting to Hawaii was more of a compromise for a guy from Pennsylvania and a woman from Malaysia. It's just a perfect place for a for a, a Malaysian and an American to to uh, settle and have their lives. We've been here now. We had a place here for about seven years. We've been here living for about four and a half years, and it's it's where we're here to stay. It's a wonderful place to be. During your special assignment when you were in Washington, D.C., on your bio it said that you were trying to bridge the worlds of business, government, and academia. How were you able to do this, or what was your strategy in bridging these things? Yeah. Well, you know, some of it was, in fact, strategy, Carrie, I guess, because one of the things we certainly teach in the classroom is the importance of planning, and I must admit I am accused of having been somewhat obsessed with planning. And so for me, part of that was government as well as business. I, I alluded to my business experience. The academic experience, I've been an adjunct uh, professor anywhere I've worked, and that includes George Washington University and American University and University of Connecticut and Penn State. But um, I also um, had an opportunity to work in government. And these were the days there was a program called a Presidential Executive Interchange Program. And I was a special assistant to the Secretary of the Treasury and had an opportunity to run a – I was a, um, essentially there as a consumer advocate, and my job was to run a program designed to make sure that the consumer point of view was represented and reflected in Treasury decisions. It was a – I was apolitical, but it was a, an important part of a, a very heavy political period in Washington. How has that experience helped to – grow you personally, and then also as a business person. Yeah. Well, you know, before I, I had that treasury job, I was I did my Ph.D. in business and its environment, or business and public policy. And this was post-Vietnam, my Ph.D. focus, and when the entire United States was really reflecting very heavily on issues of social policy. And I went to the University of Pittsburgh, which was one of two or three universities in the country at that time, really focusing a Ph.D. opportunity on business in its broader environment. And I don't mean green environment necessarily. I mean broad environment. And so for me, it was just a marvelous opportunity. It was 
three years of, of bliss, really, to, to, to go away and do a Ph.D. in that field. So I guess that said something about my interest, anyhow. And then it was natural that I would return to IBM in public affairs work with that kind of background. But that kind of background gave me uh, the academic preparation, for sure, that was consistent with maybe what my my, my root instincts and uh, preferences that it had always been. The Treasury work as a consumer advocate uh, meant I was truly engaged in major consumer issues. I can remember getting to know Ralph Nader pretty well, who was a major name in consumer affairs in those days. And uh, I think we did some good in, the, in that year at Treasury Department. And it meant, too, that as I returned to the corporate environment and then subsequently to the in, back to the university environment, that I could, with some credentials now, really stay tuned to the social policy, public policy issue. Issues of social responsibility, things of that sort, were were large part of my public affairs responsibility in the, at IBM and, and beyond. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.